Now that we looked at existence and uniqueness in the specific case of linear first order ODEs, let's look at it in the more general case. What do we need for nonlinear first order ODEs? So nonlinear first order ODEs means that we have an as OD y prime equals a function that we don't specify the form of, and this function is a function of time and of y. We add an initial condition that is y t0 equals to y0. Here it's going to be a bit more convoluted, so bear with me. The only constraints we have are on the function f, because that is the only thing we actually have. And what we need is that if f and df dy, so the derivative of f with respect to the second variable, are continuous in a rectangle around your initial condition, and now you have to think both in the t direction and in the y direction, so you want them, both f and df, to be continuous for t0 between alpha and beta and for y between gamma and delta, where gamma is smaller than y0, delta is over y0, and alpha and beta are around t0 as well. You want that it's in, in rectang this rectangle, f and df are continuous for all t and y. If that is true, then there is this value h such that for all t between t0 minus h and t0 plus h, there exists a unique solution. So what do you, let, let's try to break this down a bit more. What you need is a rectangle around your point t0, y0 in the t direction and the y direction in which both f and df dy are continuous. If that is true, then you have a smaller section of t that goes from t0 minus y to t0 plus h in which you can find a solution that passes through your initial condition. It might seem weird to check two things here. We are going to check both f and df dy. But also in the linear case, we needed to check both P and G. So you always have to check two elements. The extra difficulty is that before we had P and G only being function of time. So that was the only variable we had to check continuity with respect to. But now F and DF, DF, DY, both are two, two, func uh, two variable functions. They are functions both of time and of Y. So we need to check continuity in both directions. What happens when uniqueness fails? So if, let's look at this simple example. We are setting y prime equals to the square root of y. And we start at y zero equals to zero. Well, in this case, we, the first thing we do is check for equilibria and the solution yt equal to zero is a solution for all times. So on that hand, we have a solution. On the other hand, we can compute it by hand. It's a separable equation. We can work it out. So we can write one over square root of y dy equals to dt. Then we can integrate both parts. We have two square root of y equals t plus c. So y is equal to 1 over 2t plus c squared. And if we match that with the initial condition that says that y0 must be 0, then we have y equals to 1 over 4t squared. That's not a unique solution. We could find an equilibrium solution, and then we can find a solution through our uh, separable approaches, and they don't match. Actually, it's worse. Any combination of these two solutions is also a solution to the equation. So you have the equilibrium solution that just stays at zero for forever. You have the solution that goes away from zero as t squared, but you can also wait a while on the zero, on the equilibrium solution, 
and then take off. And at any point you can pick up on the real axis, you have a solution that takes off at that point. Why is that? Well, because our, our equation does not satisfy the existence and uniqueness prerequisites. So we want the right hand side that there can be a fun function of both y and t, but in this case, it's only a function of y to be continuous around our initial condition. And square root of y does not exist for negative y's. So it's obviously not a continuous function just because it doesn't exist just next to your initial condition that you set at zero. So we don't even have to look at the second derivative at the first derivative, even just the continuity of the, the right hand side fails in this case.